Hi guys, it's Dave, and uh, today we're gonna talk about five simple quick tips you can do to help manage your recoil on your rifle. I know there's a lot of videos out there, and a lot of different ways and techniques and opinions. Here's things that I do uh, to help mitigate my recoil management. So the very first thing I'll talk about is sling. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of my sling and I need to make it work for me. So the way I wear my sling allows me, as I push the gun out and I identify my threat, as I drive this hand up, it makes the sling tight. And because it makes it tight and pulls it into my shoulder, it helps me keep that recoil moving back and not all over the place. It's actually doing something for me by keeping my gun in position. With that sling set up though, you'll notice I have my sling at the top, so it creates this 90 degree bend. That 90 degree bend, when I build my position, pulls that gun back into me as I tighten this sling. If you have your sling attached to the bottom, what you will get when you tighten it is it'll tend to make your buttstock rise out, okay? So sling position is, is really key, in my opinion, uh, sling usage, really key for mitigating recoil management. So it looks like this. All right, so sling. Next thing I'm gonna talk about is length of pull because we have telestopping or adjustable butt stocks, right? Depends on whether I'm shooting in kit, whether I'm shooting without kit, depends on how long my arms are. But I want my length of pull adjusted so it's comfortable for me and like without kit, I don't wanna overextend my arms and I certainly don't wanna collapse everything back into the center. So I find that middle ground where I'm comfortable. And once I find that, I'll adjust this butt stock as I add or I remove kit back and forth, right? So that I keep this one position. As we're talking about butt stocks and we're talking about slings, the next thing is where you're going to place your butt stock. We've been taught over and over and over, it goes in the shoulder of the pocket. And while that's fine and there's nothing wrong with that, the closer I can move this butt stock mid clavicular line, move it towards my middle of my clavicle, the closer I'm moving it towards my spine and it's putting again, all that recoil force back into my body. The farther I get it out here, the more as that gun recoils, has nowhere to go, but up and to the right for a right-handed shooter, up to the left for a left-handed shooter. So I move the gun in to my mid clavicular line. Really rock solid. Shooting that way without kit will also help you when you're shooting with kit. If you have sl really slim, thin type of uh, shoulder straps, it helps park right inside that shoulder strap, keeps that gun where it needs to be also, and it drives your body straight back. Next we'll talk about hips. I want my hips square to my threat or whatever I'm shooting at to begin with. A lot of reasons, and we won't go into all of them. Clearly, we wanna keep our plates plates pointed forward, but by positioning my hips towards the thread, again, I'm square on my shoulders. If my hips go there, my shoulders are going there. It's keeping everything nice and square. We're moving everything center line as we can. We're locking the gun down and we're bringing that recoil straight back. Right? So it's like. Then the last thing we'll talk about for uh, your quick tips, uh, we, went, we went sling, plus stock, position, length of pull. The next is your your non-firing hand or your support hand, whatever you want to call it. We've seen it all. We've seen guys that shoot with their magazine, all right? We see guys that shoot with a, some type of forward assist or grip. And then we do the beer can or we do the forward grips. My take on it, the further I can get that hand out, the more I can control the end of that gun where I'm pointing it. Think about a two by four. If I'm moving a two by four and I'm holding it just at the end and I swing it from point A to point B and I try to stop it, I've got all that weight on the end moving. But if I pull that hand out and then I just basically take this finger and I point it to where I want it to go, the gun moves or the two by four moves so much smoother and stops more on command. So instead of me shooting like this, where I have a lot of wobble, I'll push my hand all the way out. Again, pulling straight back, middle clavicular. Right. And then the final secret bonus tip, right? A break. <laughs> Having a break's awesome. If you're on a shooting course, a fire, you're shooting a match or something like that, the brakes work wonderfully. A lot of them, you know, if you're using a suppressor, they'll come with a brake. Um, brakes are not so great when you come to a close quarter shooting class and you've got people shooting left and right of you. Uh, you will not be the favorite student amongst your peers there, this uh, on the firing line. So it, it does take away all your uh, movement. If it moves off target, it's usually because you moved it. So. Those are five really quick tips and a bonus. So if you like what you see, please comment, like, and subscribe. Uh, if you got things to add, let me know. And I uh, hope you guys have a great day. Thanks.